Pleasure Island opened and operated in Wakefield, Massachusetts from 1959 to 1969. It was one of the first major theme parks of the country, and it was planned by the same man that designed Disneyland, Cornelius Vanderbilt Wood. Everyone who lived in Wakefield during that time period remembers Pleasure Island, whether they were children or adults. It had no trouble providing entertainment, but it did have its problems. Since the land was too limiting, the New England summers too short, and the ownership constantly changing, the park was forced to shut down in 1969. We'll never get Pleasure Island back. Uh, it was uh, great memories for, uh, for many, many people. Uh, I think it's estimated almost 3 million people walked through that gate over, the, over, over 11 years. When Pleasure Island first came, uh, it was a great thing. It was almost like uh, Disney World coming in there. It was, it was going to be a, uh, a tremendous help to the tax base and the people and everything. We, we were really excited when it came. It just seemed like there was a hundred things to do, um, and they were all fun. It was built as the Disneyland of the East, and quite frankly, it was. It was the first theme park that, uh, that got built on the East Coast. Uh, fortunately, it's not here anymore. Uh, it, was, it was pretty good. Uh, the only problem with it is uh, they evidently couldn't make enough money, so they, uh, they didn't stay in business too long. Disneyland opened up in 1955, and uh, it didn't matter where they were going to build it, uh, as far as the geography went, it was where they were going to build it, where they could get to attract the most people. So they did a study in 1953, um, and there's a guy, his name is C.V. Wood, that headed up the team from Stanford University Research. And uh, they looked at different sites around Los Angeles, and they ended up picking Anaheim as the best site out of everything they looked at for Disneyland. So then ABC got involved with it uh, and uh, they, uh, they actually had the money and uh, Disneyland was built. Um, opened up in July 17, 1955. Now, the guy who did the study, the guy that headed up the team, his name was C.V. Wood. What Wood did was he started a company called Marco Engineering. And Marco Engineering, primarily it was set up so if you were an investor somewhere in the country and you wanted your own Disneyland, just like Walt built, um, you know, they would take care of it. But the one that they really got uh, initially hired for was called Magic Mountain uh, in Golden, Colorado. It was open for a couple of months and um, shut right back down again. And that was the end of Magic Mountain. Our guy, Bill Hawks, publisher of Child Life magazine, he was poking around because he wanted to build an entertainment center for children uh, and families. Uh, so he was on the same track as Walt Disney, and he got introduced to, uh, to Wood. And, um, you know, and very, very shortly, uh, Child Life World flipped to Pleasure Island. Uh, so pieces of building being built all over, the, all over the country, really, and coming together uh, and converging into, uh, onto, into Wakefield. Uh, uh, much of a disaster the first year. It rained out more in 1959 than it had since 1927. Also, uh, they were way over budget and uh, so if they had a few more attractions that might have helped also. So then um, they brought in the uh, Three Stooges for opening week at Pleasure Island. Uh, they also had, uh, you know, they had a lot of the popular uh, singers of the day that were recording artists, Ricky Nelson. Robert. And they had a lot of western stars there and they had a couple of uh, uh, movie stars there, the, uh, women movie stars that came in every once in a while, western type things. So we saw the, the uh, Clayton Moore did a show there, he was the Lone Ranger from the TV show. Uh, Ricky Nelson did a great show there. I saw uh, from the Adams Family, the old Adams Family, Lurch and Uncle Fester, Jackie Coogan and Ted Cassidy came up and did a show. And, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, the Jazz Festival from Newport came up for the 1960 season. Uh, they had something like 12,000 people that weekend at the, at the park. Uh, so they were bringing in a lot of people uh, and they were bringing in some pretty decent entertainment. They had a lot of uh, action stuff going on down there. Like um, they had bank robberies and they had uh, Moby Dick used to come up and the cannibals used to come out and they had animals on the different islands that they had around there. Yeah, it was really, really quite neat. They had the equivalent of the Jungle River Ride, which was the, uh, the Moby Dick Hunt, where uh, kids and their parents, you know, and grandparents would uh, go into a, uh, about a 3,500 pound whale boat that was built up in Maine. They built six of them. 
and uh, you know, so you, you'd have a operator of the boat that was acting as uh, not only the operator but also the narr narrator. The pilots all had a real patter down, you know, that oh, there are the gallstones, or you know, keep your hands inside the boat. The sharks are always looking for a handout. And uh, to this day, there's people that won't go on wheel watches because of that ride. They'd take you out in that harbor, in a harbor, and they'd give you a little spiel about how the whale's going to get you and you're not going to get back. And uh, they'd enter into a lagoon. This was all man-made out there. Enter into a lagoon, and a, a rhinoceros would come charging off to the side and stop just before it hit the boat. Big mechanical rhinoceros, huge. And there'd be uh, mechanical cannibals out on the uh, out on the island. But uh, that was about the time you go by the cannibals island, and you see all these cannibals out there, and they had the big pot going, and they had the missionary or somebody in the pot boiling away. They had uh, dolphins that would, you know, artificial dolphins that would come up out of the water. And then as you approached the spot where Moby Dick was, first you see the water would bubble up. That was one effect. Then as you get to a certain point, that giant whale would, would come up out of the water. And, and we'd go through the water and all of a sudden you'd see that the, the guy on the boat would say, hey, we're getting close to Moby Dick. And all of a sudden, Moby Dick would rise up out of the water, and you'd see him, and a spout of water would come up, and then all of a sudden, he'd just sink back down in there. His mouth would open, the water would spout out its head, it would come down again, the tail would come up, and the tail would splash down. That, that, that was the, 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 the biggest thrill. It was on a big under, underground track, under, underwater track, and of course, it's all sound effects. Everything's all timed. It's all mechanical. It's pretty high tech for 1959. So basically, Pleasure Island had two set, two, two sections uh, themed out. The western section um, that had the saloon, Texas uh, cafes there with the gunfights. When they had uh, when they had the bank robbers, they they'd go into the uh, the bank and they'd come out shooting their guns, and the, the guards would come out and they'd be shooting them. I think they actually gave us either fake coins or something. And we're on the train, and this guy, of course, dressed all in black, jumps on the train and with a gun, and he actually began to take the money that they had given us. He was robbing everybody on the train. And then all of a sudden, and I believe it was Rex Trailer, showed up from Boomtown, and he and this guy engaged in this gunfight while the train was moving. The barroom brawls, and they'd, they'd somebody get supposedly drunk, and they'd kick him out and throw him out through the Typical uh, western towns type stuff. Coming back towards the main gate, they had what they called the Jenny cars, and these were the drive your own cars. The Jenny cars, they, they were a blast. The thing was, you know, you always thought you were driving them, but of course you couldn't, because they, they had a, a rail down the middle, so you couldn't really go off the, you know, you couldn't go off the track at all. Uh, again, they were built out in Mountain View, California by Arrow Development that also built the teacups for Disneyland and a lot of the mechanisms for some of the some of the specialty rides at Disneyland. And then the other big section of Pleasure Island was called Clipper Cove. And Clipper Cove had, that was the uh, the, the, the Moby Dick Hunt boat ride. Uh, they had a dock ride called the Wreck of the Hesperus. Uh, they take you through a whole series of special effects that you felt like you were underwater. You were on a ship that was wrecked and went underwater. So it would try to create the illusion of bubbles and, and you sinking. And I remember there was an overhead that you'd look up to give the effect that you were underwater. You'd look up and see a shark going overhead. And the other boat ride that they had coming out of Clipper Cove was, uh, was the boat ride going over to Pirate's Cove, which you had to leave the inner harbor. You went under the uh, uh, trestle bridge and you went out into the outer harbor and they'd take you over uh, to Pirate's Cove which consisted of a treehouse. They had a live pirate that would greet you with the boat. The, the pirate one is the one you don't remember too much about, but the, the boat went around the curve, and as you came up to the island, back in the, in, in the beginning of it, there was a giant tree hut based on like Swiss Family Robinson, and as you came up to the dock, one of the employees, one of the actors, they had cannons set at the boat, and they'd say, you know, a vast mateys and all this, and they had a shotgun lying next to it with blanks in it. And they'd fire the shotgun off, and it would seem like the cannon had been fired off. And, and then they also have uh, an old shipwreck on the shore, and a bunch of other different little attractions. It was uh, very hands-on. Uh, no rides over there, but very, very hands-on. 
the, uh, uh, the wood uh, aspect of this whole thing. He went on to build another park called Freedom Land in uh, the Bronx in New York that was much bigger than Pleasure Island. And, uh, so Freedom Land opened up the following year in 1960, billed out as, guess what, the Disneyland of the East. All right, so Pleasure Island got kind of kicked to the side here a little bit. After Freedom Land, Walt Disney sued Marco Engineering and C.V. Wood over using the word Disneyland all the time. They kept on, they repeatedly used Disneyland all the time in all their advertisements. So Disney filed off a lawsuit and, uh, and uh, uh, without getting into a whole bunch of stuff, that was the end of uh, Marco Engineering. Uh, Freedom Land opened up uh, again uh, in July of 1960 and they actually, uh, they had a pretty good first season. And then they started doing a slide for various reasons. Very, very difficult to, uh, to keep feeding the machine here. So Freedom Land ended up going bankrupt. Uh, they went out at the end of the 63 season. So they were open 60, 61, 62, and 63. So Freedom Land went for four seasons. Uh, Magic Mountain, the other park out in Colorado, went for a couple of months, uh, quite frankly, in 1960. And uh, that was the end of that one. And Pleasure Island beat them all. We went for 11 seasons. All right, we went from 59 to 69 years, but it pretty much stayed. It didn't. It did, it did not differ very much, which is one of the problems because, uh, like all the Six Flags parks nowadays, they always add a roller coaster or two, and uh, and that's how you get your new audience every year. It just couldn't keep up. You know, it couldn't. Make, it couldn't. It kept changing hands, and it, they, they couldn't keep it viable because of the, the short season. Um, mostly, when you talk about the park, you know, deteriorating, you, you think of Moby Dick. And you know, just getting tired and tired of looking, and and the rides, you know, just getting more, uh, say, less interactive. The train ride was a train ride. They didn't have bad guys jumping on board anymore, and Rex Trailer, you know, fighting them off. On um, Pleasure Island, that was mostly the swamps down there. This is this is one of the reasons why they could get the water and the boats and Moby Dick and, and that sort of thing with a lot of the islands on it. But and I think that's probably what did them in a lot. They really couldn't get large enough for enough people to come there to, to make it worth their while. The land became more valuable than the actual business itself. So after going through um, the, the, uh, the four owners, the park shut down at the end of the 1969 season. So the park deteriorated. They didn't sell off originally uh, when the park shut down. Uh, a lot of the buildings just sat out there and uh, you know various buildings got burnt down. Uh, the train station got burnt down in April of 1971 and arson has got it, which is a real shame. And then of course once the park closed, you know, you could still go through there once in a while and that was pretty fascinating to actually like in the early 70s, it, it, was, it was closed and the buildings were starting to fall down and a friend of mine and myself uh, jumped the gate and just walked around the place. And that was fascinating, you know, to see the buildings falling down and the, the train depot burned. And then they ended up, uh, uh, whatever was left out there was just falling into the, right, right back into the swamps where it was built originally. And uh, then they put up a sale and a guy from Texas came up uh, looking for a site up in the Boston, New England area to develop uh, for real estate for some offices. Uh, did a flyover, uh, flew over Pleasure Island site um, they made an offer and they ended up buying it. And uh, so that is where Edgewater Office Park came from, uh, sitting on top of uh, Pleasure Island. Now, uh, if Pleasure Island hadn't filled in all that property over there, by the mid 80s, when uh, Edgewater was getting ready to get developed, it's a better possibility than not that a lot of that park wouldn't have got built because they wouldn't have been able to, because uh, they wouldn't have been able to go and fill in uh, you know, that portion of Reedy Meadows. Um, that uh, that was that was done back in the back in the late 50s. We'll never get Pleasure Island back. Uh, it was uh, great memories for uh, for many many people. I would say it was a mini to Disneyland out here, um, and the, it, it was it was a beautiful park for a, for a few you know a few years there. You could say that for people my age, Pleasure Island was a state of mind. It was just it was a great big playground in our own backyard. You know, 20 minutes up the highway. And uh, it was just, it was a place where we could go and it was like ours. Oh, to live on Sugar Mountain With the barkers and the colors